of my personality. I, I stole the title of the gang from a Daniel Johnson picture. Oh. But uh, all those characters are just different aspects of... Yeah, I like drawing like kind of... Um, yeah, like these guys are like, they're all just like kind of dumbfounded dummies. <laughs> I kind of like it. That, right, uh, right. I don't know. An episode that led to being in the home. For, is that your home the first time? Well, the first time in the Homewood was, uh, was on Suicidal. Oh, okay. So they kept me there, and I didn't have to grace with our uh, very delusional grace, where I thought everything was just a movie. It's oh, all right. Part okay, of yeah, part of the movie, movie yeah. Came. yeah. And I'm like, oh, hey, guys. I was, for a week or so, I was just like, Going around, um, trying to promote marijuana and Jesus at the same time to right. strangers, and people are like, "What the?" <laughs> or, or, or I'm like talk, talking out on the bus, and the bus is like, just drops me off in front of a snowman. So I'm, I'm like, "Wow!" I'm talking to a snowman at this point. <laughs> you know, Greece, Greece, where I thought everything was just a movie. It's oh, all right, part okay, yeah, part of the movie, yeah. Came. yeah. I've been playing for three weeks, and I formed a band. <laughs> and and uh, we basically sat around arguing what two's better, Metallica or Nirvana. I had written one good song, and we'd play that over and over again, and we're like, yeah, we're going to play this in the school auditorium and smash her stuff and like we're gonna <laughs> bring it down. I think we were called dystopia or something. A lot of noise, a lot of stupidity, <laughs> like shit, and, like, you know, Beavis and Butthead and what here and they're like, you're not, you're not able to work here. You gotta stay under the pretense that humans are watching it and the humans that are watching it are the friends I had in my head, I had a hard time communicating with people, maybe, or something. I had, I thought there was going to be this homecoming with, like, Sonic Youth, and I thought, like, James Hetfield from Metallica was in my dad's truck, and I thought I was making a film, and ugly, to say the least. One year, like, making a, one year, like, making a movie, it's a good way to exercise your demons. Yeah. It's like, everything... There's, there's a whole album where she came out with, uh, your bedroom walls are falling down, everyone can see you now. He's right, 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 right. In the hospital laughing. I was laughing because my life was, there's no skeleton, I can't hide anything. And the people I adored, the, the archetypes in my brain, like I looked up to them, I loved their music there. And, in my head more than my friends were, what so-called friends, uh, And it's just the world, and I'm like, 
so used to living inside my head, I thought, well, I'm going to try, like, art, and, like, yeah, those blinds are open now, and, like, this is the art, this is my, art is my, my experience, and um, it's a movie, and people I love, like, Sonic Youth, and Corny Love, and David, they're all watching me, this is an experiment, <laughs> and they're watching this Kurt raised, Kurt raised from the dead, and, and I was going into astral things, and the movie was saying, diary, and I'm like, to my mom, who's like, woo, and I'm like, see this book I got? She's like, who wrote it? I did. Or else I yeah. It's, see, you get the humor, and yeah. everyone else at the homewood kind of got the humor too, but until they <laughs> tackled me and injected me and threw me in isolation. <laughs> to work first and deliver my medication for human contact and make sure I'm up. And at my door, they're at my door. Ding dong. Uh, Hi, Paul. Uh, here's your meds. Uh, take them. Okay. Do you want to go bowling at 2 p.m.? See you later. read the story Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. It was decades before my own depression. Now looking back over my shoulder, I see it very much as a depiction of depression. A uh, human being uh, can't get to work, is overwhelmed, um, stuck on his back, his legs kicking and Finally, when he does turn over, uh, I don't know, he somehow he gets a rotting apple in his back. It, it's a great exploration of a metaphorical, metaphorical uh, depiction. And in a book I'm, I'm reading about Franz Kafka right now, it talks about how Freud, Nischke, uh, Kafka, and others um, wanted to dig beneath the surface of social convention to, quote, discover the multiplicity of selves and fictional truths in the human psyche. goes on to say, uh, later on in the book, that Kafka was haunted by the feeling that he was losing himself or wandering into a strange country farther than ever man had wandered before, a country so strange that not even the air had anything in common with his native air, where one might die of strangeness and yet whose enchantment was such that one could only go on and lose oneself further. The exploration of the psyche in respect of uh, creative metaphor, uh, where one can actually gain insight into one's own multiplicity of selves through the creative endeavor, is precisely what Paul Allman is doing in his art, in his painting, and in his music making. Like if the pitcher and the fishes that it he's got like his oar like half in the water just posing. And the fish is like out of the water saying like screw the pitcher. What? <laughs> like he puts scra scratchy scratch for his uh, the frame. Screw trying to fit in the frame, it's kinda of making fun of itself. Yeah. And, like, I was inspired by looking at Monet and all his fancy little women like with umbrellas and everything. Yeah, I like umbrellas. I love umbrellas. Yeah. <laughs> and that one's new too. And, you know, oh, yeah. It's just kind of... He's pulling apart this... The... the, the yeah, the wrench is kind of getting scratched out. He doesn't know. He's throwing a wrench in there. He's taking it out. He's trying to... Is there sort of a mini explosion going on? Yeah, he's he, pulling it, but she, she's pulling apart. Like, oh, 
like a steering wheel <laughs> okay, forward. Right. right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I was like, Great when did you first start? School. Started uh, when you were little, was there crayons or any oh, other oh, inspiration? Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, I'd back further, like the roots, like. I was obsessed with comic books, collecting comic books, and I just draw them like, out of comic books. You know, just like a grade eight, I'd go around and stealing people's red pens. Well, they'd give them to me. I had this "What Happens When" uh, comic book series that I was doing, and, and my teacher let me get away with it. He, he's like, he's out on the page, next page. Uh, chainsaws and, and like you blow on the red pen and it's like <laughs> <laughs> right and then uh, uh, isn't this this was with what sorry uh, watercolor and marker mm -hmm. say that I'm not worried about Paul Allman seeing this biopic of his life and, and his work. Um, in 2003 or 2004, I went to his place and shot maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes of video. Um, I myself was pulling my, was coming out of uh, depression. And I was using art as leverage to do that. I'd made a, was working on a documentary of Drew Stedman, a Guelph artist at the time. And uh, I'm not sure how I ended up at Paul's place. At any rate, I, I left there and never saw him again for 15 years. I didn't even know his last name. Then I was working on a book called Neurogenesis, which was essentially about synchronicity, about Carl Jung, Wolfgang Pauli, and and the whole concept of, of serendipity and synchronicity, of parallelisms and, and so on. And um, I, I re-encountered the half hour or so of video that I had done of Paul Allman. And I felt really badly because I hadn't thrown him a lifeline. He was a schizophrenic painter at the time, a young man, and uh, had been in uh, a psychiatric institution, Homewood, in, in Guelph. I'm not sure how many times by, by that point in his life. He was diagnosed late, I guess, in, in public school or high school as a schizophrenic. And schizophrenic is a pretty ugly term in, in some ways, a very scary term. And um, to me, uh, as someone who, who writes about neuroplasticity, about consciousness and creativity and catharsis through creativity and growth and, and spontaneity and so on, um, schizophrenia seems to represent all the sort of dissociative things that we label mental illness. There's a little bit of autism in there, certainly bipolarity and mania, depression, um, all those things layered and, and coming at a human being all, all at once. Uh, it's, it has to be very disconcerting. And Paul has not seen this video um, that I did of him 15 years ago. <laughs> As I had re-encountered it and was editing it, trying to put a drawstring around my own artistic endeavor, I, do, I wasn't a painter really when, when I saw him the first time, and I'd become a painter, and I'd become very familiar with artistic endeavor and the panorama and the archetypes of, of what you know, exists in, in the art world. And I see him not just as a schizophrenic painter now, but as a profound, insightful human being. And I consider his artwork, his painting, 
you know, foremost in, in Canadian art and in world art. Uh, he's willing to penetrate different realms, so, you know, pull back the veil with the imagination and, and go with what that means. And that means a great deal in terms of neuroplasticity, in terms of complexity. And certainly, uh, I'm sure he has his, his points of, of balance and his points of, of confusion and where complexity simply overwhelms. We all do. That, that's the human condition. It's the existential reality of, of complexity in a hundred billion neuron universe that, that composes our brain. At any rate, uh, I, I'm sure it won't trigger any sort of um, but, but, you know, uh, having just seen the Elton John biopic and him talking about when he saw it, um, that he started sobbing. And, and for sure, anyone seeing their own life on the screen, um, you know, this sort of mirror neuron engagement transference that happens when, when one transfers into one own self uh, is more profound than one, you know, as we transfer into others. Paul had a whole gang of personalities uh, in his mind um, that he was sorting out, that he was uh, differentiating in terms of uh, his illustrations, his paintings. And I think his composite overview of humanity and his insights into personality defectiveness uh, comes from uh, a very deep place in his heart, in his soul, in his consciousness, a very deep place. Um, I was originally going to call the movie Is That You because there's his painting of that sort of alien creature, the syringes and things when he was uh, in Homewood that, that to me uh, depicted a dissociative state that bordered on complete uh, alienation so that I see that, that figure uh, on the bed as a Martian alien, somebody who's come to this planet and uh, like a transplant, like a uh, blood transfusion or an organ transplant has been subsequently uh, refused uh, admittance to and, and rejected and that, that, that the power of that and, and what that means in terms of the daily re repercussions and so on is is very well put put someone very much on on the edge of their own understanding of their own identity of the identity of others and and the i thou relationship with with others and the insight into how humanity goes about uh, dehumanizing itself on a day-to-day -day basis um so I, i've written you know, several books, Theory of Mind, The Art of Sanity, Neurogenesis, and Burnt Offering. And I have one of Paul's paintings on the cover of Burnt Offering, a collection of poetry and and songs that, that I've written. And I, I want to be perfectly clear that I, I don't, even though I'm mentioning him as a, you know, diagnosed schizophrenic, um, I don't think that that's where he is at now in terms of how he has, uh, you know, created this journey, this adventure into his own imagination, into his own understanding of archetypes, into his understanding of God. Uh, at certain times he was transferred into believing that he was the reincarnation of, of Kurt Cobain. Uh, Daniel Johnson, uh, he has embodied much of, of some of, uh, m maybe too much in terms of embodiment. He almost looks like Daniel Johnson. Daniel Johnson I didn't know anything about um, before Paul told me about him, the devil. Uh, I hope I've got the name right, Daniel Johnson. And uh, certainly in the movie about Daniel Johnson, uh, he, he too had mental uh, delusions and once when he was flying his father was piloting he reached over and took the key and pulled it out of, of the airplane and threw it out the window necessitating his father to crash land the airplane fortunately they survived and um, the, the whole notion of realms of activity uh, within the mind, delusions of grandeur, illusions, and, and the layering of 
how we distance ourselves from that inner spirit that, that constitutes the core, <clears throat> excuse me, the core reality. Uh, I think those are important uh, considerations uh, that have to be made, that, that we have to re-enlighten ourselves and, and take a, a good look around the sort of omnidirectional awareness of, of the third eye that, that Paul uh, talks about frequently and uh, the eyes that, that exist within his paintings and the characters that exist within his paintings the energy that exists within him, he's much better painter than Daniel Johnson as far as I'm concerned and I think, uh, I think uh, people should recognize that but we live in an age when um, people are so confiscated uh, and contextualized by a digital reality it's like everyone has lost the ability to see, oh well maybe it never existed in any generation uh, Vincent van Gogh only sold one painting in his lifetime. He only had uh, <clears throat> one showing, I, I believe in Paris, in a sort of cafeteria, and he was forced to take it down because people didn't like the painting. And there's this incredible refusal uh, in human nature as plasticity defines us within this sort of rigidity of awareness and and it it becomes a very concrete wall that that we're up against in terms of understanding but um, you know make no mistake Paul Allman is a profound artist and it's very much uh, deliberated um, accentuated uh, within his art and within his music and he believes in himself and that is uh, something that, that contours his, uh, the ongoingness of, of his journey. And uh, I, I think that, that people should, you know, sort of stand up and, and salute the, the magnificence of, of his body of work. And... Uh, just kind of piece together random things and like bring together like uh, the hemisphere of writing and symbols with beauty and art and stuff. Like, just kind of let it flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
wish I had a few. You're made up of causes and conditions. I don't exist? Your true self neither exists nor doesn't exist. It is pure thusness. Oh. Thank you, Dharma Lizard. Sweet. <laughs> Noble truth, sir. Uh, right views, right aspiration. Uh, you'd have a hoot. Okay. Well, let's get back to the party. Nah, I'm gonna go meditate. Meditating, with all his effort. Two minutes later, he's eating chips. Dharma lizard, gotta dance. The phenomenal world doesn't even inherently exist. <laughs> then he gets some action, and he's, he's, yeah. <laughs> Who creates the perception of a self? A soul, a being, or a life is not fit to be a bodhisattva. Hi, Dharma Lizard, how are you? Ignorant fool. Good. One is like extinction, a snap relationship. He's on his fourth beer, looking at the people next to him. Those losers, some people are so ignorant, so attached. Forever prayed in Homewood? No. no? It is all part of the trip. I guess because you, you said you had the sort of 10th year anniversary of 10 years of being pretty stable, so this. Oh, this would be the 10th year of <coughs> being sober, anyway. Right. Oh, when when you when your mother throws you in a state that a baby almost gets in that uh, being in this club and like becoming the music. Okay. Know, yeah. Yeah. Or looking at something and there's nothing in between. It. I am. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's with these I'm very intelligent drug addicts. Yeah. Ass, yeah. Man. But and then going no going to the home one it was like I was like. 
Personified, uh, and the opportunity here to, you know, take a look at Paul's life and his work and what he's done to modify his firing and wiring, his plasticity and his brain, uh, how he's migrated to become a, a totally different uh, person, a person who can look back over the shoulder and, and look at, you know, the trying challenges, uh, the tough realities, the multi-dimensionality uh, that imprisoned him, and it seems fair enough to uh, suggest that he is, what he reveals to us in his madness and his deciphering of that madness and his moving forward uh, speaks to us all about our own mental states and our own uh, mental health and, and should be incentive for any of us to to recognize what plasticity in the brain can do as we modify our firing and wiring. Now, 
most of the psychiatrists, I'm sure, etc., the social workers at Homewood would attribute Paul's success uh, in his sobriety and in his uh, life he has been living. Uh, they would indicate, uh, I'm sure, that the medications, <clears throat> excuse me, the medications are keeping him in line. I believe it's creativity because creativity addresses complexity in the human brain and allows us to exercise the multifoliate rose that T.S. Eliot would talk about. The blossoming throughout the uh, 100 billion neuron universe in all its fantasy, all its imaginative splendor, and in all its, you know, practical thoughtfulness. There, there's a never-ending realm of explorer territory, and then you add on to that neurogenesis, the very birth of brand new neurons, so that you can actually feed your hundred billion neuron universe a whole new brain in the birthing process and in the process of neurogenesis. Schizophrenia uh, seems to represent, as I suggest, um, how disorganized the mind can become in understanding itself and in apprehending uh, reality. And I think this, this movie then becomes a positive testimony to, to, to what can transpire uh, in the human person. <laughs>